you mentioned a really interesting port, uh, point right there because I've noticed, let's take Latham, which is, of course, the little electric reservoir over here that's got spots and largemouth. Anybody that fishes Latham knows that at any time, the topwater bite is phenomenal over there. Uh, unfortunately, y'all didn't get the experience of the day you were over there, but it is. And I would venture to say that if you catch 10 fish on top water in these schools that come up on Latham, probably 50% are largemouth. Now, we're starting to see that a little bit on Lanier. Maybe not top water, but you're catching largemouth in places where they might not have been 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, you know, anytime, I'll say it this way, and this is, I think is probably the best way to explain it. Anywhere you go, um, whatever the food source is there, mm -hmm. the fish are going to respond to that. So with it being herring and Lanier, they're going to act like herring eaters. Right. So, you know, regardless, I mean, if it's, if it's, a, if it's a big fish, a bass, a spotted bass, you know, largemouth, a striper, I mean, sometimes we catch catfish out there with them. Yes. Anything that eats yep. them is going to be out there with them, mm -hmm. and they're going to kind of adapt and, you know, to, to eating whatever the food source is. Right. You know, whether it be, you know, threadfin shad. You know, if you go to the lakes, it's got threadfin shad in it. You know, you'll have to catch them a different way than you do at Lake Lanier. And, you know, from lake to lake, you know, I always tell people when they come out on trips with me, it's very important to figure out what your food source is. Right. Figure out your food source and then kind of put your seasonal patterns together. Take all that information and go try to figure out what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You can take that anywhere you go. Right. Right. That makes sense. Absolutely. 